So uh, why, why is Go the best choice? Uh, for me, the credentials of Go are what convinced me that I wanted to learn this language and no other language. So the credentials, the credentials of Go. And let me tell you about the credentials. So Go was created by Google. And Google, to me, is these, the best software engineering firm to have ever existed in the history of humanity. Like, you know, they have some of the best software engineering people in the world. And I think that, you know, they've just killed it as a tech business. So that's just my personal opinion. So in 2007, Google was like, none of the other programming languages in the world, not Java, not C, not C Sharp, not C++, None, not JavaScript, not PHP, none of the other programming languages <coughs> in the world can do what we want done. And what did they want? They wanted to take advantage of multiple cores. So you've heard about dual core, quad core computers. That's a new thing, right? And that was only like 2005 onward, or mid 2000s that started to happen. Before that, it was a single core and a computer. So C, C++, Java, all the big systems level languages are written to take advantage, are written for a single core. They weren't written to natively take advantage of multiple cores. And Go, Google, Google, get it? Google, hold on, let me make it big. Google, Go, right? Go programming language. Google wanted a language that was built to easily take advantage of multiple cores so that you could easily do concurrency. And other languages weren't designed to easily do concurrency either. It's difficult. And so for those two reasons, and maybe other reasons, and you could read about it by going to the official website of, of the programming language, golang.org, and then you could go to the documents, and you could go to the FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions, so this is the horse's mouth. This is where you go to get the official information about the uh, Go programming languages. Uh, why are you creating a new language? Go is born out of frustration with existing languages and environments for systems programming. Programming become too difficult, and the choice of language was partly blame. One had to choose either efficient compilation, efficient execution, or ease of programming. All three were not available in the same language. So they wanted something that could compile efficiently, execute efficiently, and also be easy to program. Programmers who, who could were choosing ease over safety and efficiency by moving to dynamically typed languages such as Python and JavaScript rather than C++ or to lesser extent Java. Go is an attempt to combine the ease of programming of an interpreted dynamically typed language with the efficiency and safety of a statically typed compiled language. And so dynamically typed versus statically typed Statically typed just means when you declare, statically typed just means it's much more stringent about what you can do. There's no loosey-goosey, hey, x used to be an int, now I'm going to store a string in that variable. Can't do that statically typed, right? And if you do, it throws an error. And statically typed will maybe cause you a little bit of frustration at the front end. You can't just be as, you know, you know lackadaisical about your coding. You have to be a little bit more, pay more attention. But it helps you a lot in the long run. It helps you avoid really problematic errors, which cause you even more trouble. Um, it also aims to be a modern with support for networked and multi-core computing. Finally, working with Go is intended to be fast. It should take at most a few seconds to build a large executable or on a single computer. To meet these goals required addressing a number of linguistic issues, blah, blah, blah. So this article, Go at Google, discusses the background and the motivation. So that was it, right? The credentials and uh, multiple cores, credentials, and so I'm just going to make the size smaller again. There we go. And yeah, I did. Official. Thank you, Bob. Official website. Please keep checking throughout the day. So that's the official website, and uh, we were just looking at that frequently asked question right here, right there, and uh, I'll put that in there too. So uh, credentials, Google, and then they hired Rob. Pike, Ken Thompson, and Robert Gressimer. I don't know if that's how you spell his name. Rob Pike, Ken Thompson, Robert Gressimer. These guys. And so these guys 
I had never heard of them before that, but I often talk about them as luminaries in computer science. They're pretty heavy hitters. So between these three guys, they all helped build the C programming language. So they weren't the only ones, obviously, but they were there. They helped build the C programming language. Unix, the Unix operating system, and UTF-8, uh, the world's most popular coding scheme. So these are some of the heavy hitters in computer science, and these guys know what they're doing. So you have a software company that knows what they're doing, they're doing, and they hired people who know what they're doing, and they built a new language. Based upon that, I was like, I want to learn that language. And performance metrics I've seen, the, only, the closest one I've ever seen is Node.js is uh, half as fast as Go. So Go is twice as fast as Node. And other than that, nobody's, nobody's close. And performance is key, you know, so. So anyhow, that's why I was interested in learning Go. And the fact that it does what Google does, which is web-based stuff. So, you know, it's built for Google. And Google does distributed web applications. That was the other reason I was like, that's what I want to do, so perfect. So those are my motivations for Go. Any questions about Go? Why are they pushing uh, Angular so hard? Then, because that's web-based. Why don't I know more about Go? So the question is, is why is Google pushing Angular so hard? Yeah. I don't know. OK. Um, I think uh, Angular fits in with modern web development practices more today. And I, I kind of had the break, which was I was old school, where it's like HTML and server side, and that's what you do and like maybe just a little JavaScript, you know, pre-2005. And so I came back to it and I'm like, I just want HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and server-side. I don't want libraries, I don't want frameworks. I was recently working with Fawn Awesome and, you know, to download the Fawn Awesome library took 100 kilobytes. It was actually 92 kilobytes for the version 1.5 and then there was a 1.6 and it went up to 98 kilobytes. I just extracted the SVGs, threw away Fawn Awesome, don't require people to download that, and my I went from 98 kilobytes to like, you know, 2.3 kilobytes just to send them the SVGs I wanted, you know, and that made me more performant. And so I'm, I'm always really suspect of boot crap. You guys have heard of boot, boot crap? <laughs> I'm always really boot crap. And this is cool. I'll just share this. But, oops, they made a mistake. Hold on, let me fix that. <laughs> and I guess it's in here somewhere. It's right there. All right. Oh, it's almost better. Okay, there. <laughs> Bootcraft is the most popular HTML, CSS, and JS framework for developing responsive mobile first web. And there's a lot of strong arguments for Bootcraft, right? I mean, it's really popular. People want it for jobs. They'll help you get a job. And yeah, it's really fast, so you just want to push something out, cool, it makes it look pretty fast. But it's not very performant. And, and the average page size is 2,400 kilobytes. I want mine to serve under five. And I want 300 of that to be the hero image, you know? And so uh, let's, let's just roll our own. And so Angular, I think, falls in that library framework thing. And Angular is a very JavaScript intensive thing. And web is starting to shift away from JavaScript. AMP, AMP pages, Node.js is allowed, right? And uh, they need things to be faster, and JS is a real performance inhibitor. Um, so, you know, uh, so I think you could probably do Angular, because Angular is basically a, a framework which, I don't know a lot about it, but it, it runs a lot of it on the client, right? And then it just makes calls back to the server to get data. And so those calls back to the server are asking for JSON, their AJAX calls, and they're just asking for JSON, is that right? And so you, you, the server, what's the server? Well, is Angular also the server? Or you choose your server. So maybe you could use Go with Angular. But, you know, um, I think also why there isn't a lot of, I mean, and Bill Gates said, if you want to be successful, get in front of what's coming and let it hit you. You can learn Java. You can learn PHP. A lot of jobs out there for Java developers and PHP developers. But you're just going to be another face in the crowd of millions, and you're going to be a newbie.
facing the crowd of millions of people have been doing it for 10, 15 years, right? It's like, whoa, right? Go was version one in March of 2012. It's four years old. Like, and, you know, I am one of the first dudes who's like teaching people how to do web pro programming with Go. Um, like, because the classes, I'd record them out of Fresno State and put up a lot of YouTube videos. And I've seen it start to gain traction. And uh, one of my friends is uh, this guy, Bill Kennedy, who's the world's leading corporate trainer for the Go programming language. And I became friends with him because I went to his trainings. And when he found out what I was doing, he's like, dude, you got to learn so much more. I mean, you need to come back to my trainings. I'm not even going to charge you. <laughs> so he just had me come back to his training so I could, he could continue to school me, you know. But uh, being friends with Bill, it's like, Oh, really? You're going to Oracle? Oh, really? You're going to Int Oh, really? You're going to Microsoft? You know, it's just like now it's like all these companies are starting to pick up Go. And so uh, I don't know what the point of that story was, but get in front of what's coming and let it hit you. Why haven't more people been used? Why, why don't you hear about Go more and why so much Angular? I think market momentum and, you know, people have just been doing what they've been taught. And that's what's being taught. It takes time for all that to shift. And, uh, and server-side for Go, I mean, it's a new language. It's only four years old. Literally, when I first started learning it in December of 2014, like one of my resources was a book written by a guy in China translated to English. Because there really wasn't that much stuff out there two years ago. You know, and, and it was hard. I'm like, you know, re learn programming in Chinglish. Variable, nice. You know, undeclared, assign, initialize to begin process of calculation. You know, it's like, well, that's kind of interesting, but it's hard to understand. So, so uh, good question. And I think, uh, I think, you know, I think it's going to continue to grow in popularity. Any other questions? I'm going to put luminaries in computer science helped create C Unix UTF-8. And I'm going to spell his name wrong, right? I didn't mean that. Yeah. What groups? No, we're all beginners, including me. Does that answer your question? Are you supposed to be at a certain table? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, I guess I'm not a beginner, but hey, how comfortable with more old school advice? Maybe Cobalt Pro is something that you're doing. Awesome. Yeah, Cobalt for a long time, and I can't explain it how I did. And I'm back in a little bit, and dabbling. I'm actually a special ed teacher. 